Hi guys, this is Brandy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using the Hero Arts kit from May. I decided a couple months ago to get the Hero Art kits to make some content for my channel. And I have the April kit and the May kit and the June kit's probably on the way soon and I haven't even opened any of them. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> but anyhow, today I'm gonna make a couple of things. I have some ideas of what I'm going to do, and then I have no idea on other things I may do. So we're just kind of winging it here. But I really love this, um, so let me take it out of the bag, which if anyone um, subscribes to the Hero Arts uh, Facebook or Instagram, you've already seen this kit, but it's really nice. It's like an under the sea kind of thing, but it's very realistic as far as the fish and the coral and all that goes. So I'm going to be using this today. So my first idea is I wanna make a frame for, just to give us a gift to someone. And of course it's going to have that under the seat theme. And first thing I want to do is use some of these fish stamps because I've already pre, um, brain's not working. I've already colored, uh, not colored, painted the frames white with a satin white paint. I went ahead and used that same paint that I had done a while back with the um, gel printing. It is a satin indoor outdoor paint. And these frames I got, they're like dollar, I think they were a dollar at Walmart. You could probably get some at Dollar Tree. I tried to save the packaging for it to show you, but now I have no idea where I put it. So anyway, I'm just gonna stamp on this. This is collage paper. This is by Tim Holtz, and I do believe it's been discontinued. Some places may still have it, but it is his regular collage paper. It just does not have anything printed on it. I like to use it for stamping for decoupage, and I've done it before on my channel, I believe on some tags. If I can find the video, I'll post it. But I'm just going to stamp some of these fish and get a block. And I'm going to use Memento ink because I will be coloring these with alcohol markers. Now I've never colored on the collage paper with anything but alcohol markers. So I don't know if you try to use a different type of marker if it's going to smudge or bleed so let's see how this works out all right so that's going to take a little while to dry and it didn't do perfect and I'm not really great at stamping with a block but we're just going to go with it I'm not super picky it's going to look good in the end, even if it's not stamped perfectly. So we'll get this little seahorse. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Before I get too far into my video, I wanna give a shout out to Richard. Um, I promised him I would. And if anyone else would like a shout out, just leave a comment below and I'd be happy to give you a shout out. Everybody likes to hear their name mentioned. It's fun, I agree. I have a certain person I watch that, you know, says hi to people and I always want them to, you know, wish they were saying hi to me too, so. I'm just going to do a very varied, that's not what I wanna say. Just doing a couple of different types here and I'm just stamping off on this scratch paper I have under it. It's one of the ones from gel printing. That's why you see blobs of paint on it. I don't really know exactly what I want the design to look like, so I'm really getting a, you know, a bunch of different types on here because I really want to have a lot of options when I get ready to do it. I'm going to be coloring these with my Copics, which I have not used in a long time. So I'm excited about that. I've been doing so much junk journaling. I haven't been doing very much coloring. 
and I love to color. Not to say you can't color in a junk journal, it's just not, you know, the first thing you do, think of when you think of junk journaling. All right, let's see. I think there's this cute little clownfish. We use him. Now, when you color with Copics with this, of course, you won't be doing a lot of blending or anything because it's really not going to show up on the collage paper. Sorry if I'm out of frame here. I'm trying to pay attention. All right, let's get one more fish. I'm going to do this. I don't really know what any of these fish are called. I think I think that's an angel fish, but I mean I'm kind of getting uh, getting some. This this looks like Dory, and and there's like Nemo right there. So um, yeah, if you have kids, you've seen those fish before. All right. Not the most perfect stamping in the world, but we're going to make it work. There, there's actually is a little clownfish also. Let's just use him. This is Nemo, that's Marlin. So let's see. We'll get us a little Nemo on there. Yeah, my daughter's had two clownfish and she named them Marlin and Nemo and Marlon didn't make it right off the bat. He, we don't know what happened to him actually. One morning she went and looked in the tank and he wasn't in there and we searched through everything. We took this rock structure decoration she had in it out and we flushed it through water and we never did find Marlon. So who knows whatever happened to Marlon. Um, but Nemo lived for a while and then Nemo got sick. I talked about him on one of our other videos. All right, so I am going to color these and then I'll come back for the rest because, you know, coloring is kind of boring and y'all probably don't want to watch that part. Now I have it all colored. I did put a white piece of paper under it so I could really see the true color because on this paper it looked a little different and the frame I painted is white. So I'm going to let this dry because I can see because it's shiny. Some of the ink is still wet. So I'm going to let that dry the rest of the way. I'm going to try to use the dies, these to cut out the images. So I don't know how well that's going to work on the tissue paper, but I'm going to give it a try. So I'll be back after I get these ready. I did put a good many layers on there. My bird really wants to participate in the video today. So yes, there's lots of chirping, chirping going on. Um, he is very interested in what I'm doing <laughs> and wants to talk about it. All right, so I've got that taken care of. It seems to be dry all the way, even though it's a little bit shiny, that's just the finish of the alcohol ink. So I'm going to match these up and I will be back. I actually decided it wasn't a good idea to use the dyes. The more I thought about it, the more I'm really afraid it's going to make these little collage paper pieces like hard to handle. And that could very well not be true, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm not going to use the dyes for this part. What I'm going to do is just I think I'm just going to cut close to the image, but just be careful not to chop any part of it off. This paper is actually pretty durable. Um, it's not like your standard tissue paper. So if you tried this with tissue paper, I really don't think it would work out the same. Tissue paper tends to be a lot Dinner, and I really think the markers would just bleed everywhere. But with that being said, I haven't tried it, so it may work. I have coffee dyed tissue paper and 
such as that. So you never know, it might work. And you know, since I said that, I do have some tissue paper sitting over there. I may just try it just for anybody who doesn't have the collage paper. We can kind of see what happens. So it's, it's not the best piece of tissue paper. It's kind of been crumpled and it is coffee dyed, but we can see if we can stamp on it and what happens. So I'm just going to peel off just a random stamp. I don't really care what it's of. And I'm gonna use the same ink that I used before. I really hope I'm staying in frame in this video, guys. All right, so I got a seashell. So, oh, it stamped very nicely. Nice. We'll let that dry for a minute, although I just smudged my finger all over it, but you know. Now I'm gonna try the alcohol ink, see how it does. Yeah, it absorbs a whole lot more ink, whereas it kind of sits on top of it on that collage paper, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know, it's probably not gonna blend the colors as well, but that's not super important. You can still get, you know, a good look. So, hey, that might actually be a, um, if you don't have the collage paper, this seems to work out. And I find tissue paper is very similar to um, napkins when you're gonna decoupage with it. So just be careful and don't get it too wet or it tears easily. And you could also do this same technique with a napkin. Like if you have a napkin with pictures on it that you wanna do, but we'll throw this one on there just as a, as a little extra piece. We'll put it along the bottom of the frame. Here I'm cutting this one out all precisely, but it does have an off-white background, so, cause it's coffee dyed. So there you go. And you know, I watch a lot of the Tim Holtz videos and his demos, and he always says, if you wanna find out, try. You know, you, no one has all the answers to how different mediums work on different surfaces. So if you, if you don't know, try. And that's what we just did. Wanna know if you have the tissue and it worked. Wouldn't have known if we wouldn't have tried. I'm gonna get the frame and hopefully it's dry enough for us to put these on. It does seem to be dry enough. This is, like I said, just a an inexpensive wood frame. I did not, there's a big glob of paint on that. I did not paint the back because I just really didn't care to. Um, this particular frame, I think was 96 cents at Walmart. Jewel is very interested in the frame. Y'all hear him talking. It actually comes with this little thing to stand it up. So, you know, like I said, it's very inexpensive. I'm going to give it to a friend. We're going on a trip to the beach. So this, I'm gonna give her this little gift. She can put a picture of her and her daughter in it. Or perhaps she wants to use it for a different thing. And you know, that's cool too. All right, I have my Distress Collage Medium. I do have the crazy one and I just watched Tim Holtz um, video this last week and because I never understood what the crazing part is. I never take advantage of that. I don't think I use a thick enough piece, um, thick enough layer, and then you have to go back and put ink in it. But they were out of the regular Distress Collage Medium and it's worked for me. Um, so I have no complaints. Bear with me. Okay, I was looking for my collage brush. Now what I like to do first, let's figure out where we're going to put everything. And I'm actually going to put things on here facing where I actually colored is going to be on the opposite side. Now I could have done this blue background, but I really didn't want to um, I didn't want to the color since this is clear it would have changed the color so I just did white so I mean it's just a home decor piece it's not meant to you know look like very super realistic okay so some of our fish may not fit I'll put him here of course fish can be swimming down these, I don't like, these are too much in a straight row. I don't like that. We'll put him 
this this is the hardest part right of anything is figuring out how you want to put it put it down well let this fish be swimming up oops Yeah, he can be swimming. He's he's swimming very high up. <laughs> I don't like that. Now, I am going to go back and put some, like, bubbles and stuff around them, too. Um, let's see. The jellyfish needs to be at the top. The jellyfish needs to be... The jellyfish is going to have to go the way he was stamped because he just won't look right the other way. We can let him hang off and we can cut off the edge. It's all about, oh, Lordy, sorry guys. I just figured out half the frame wasn't where you could see it. I apologize for that. Y'all are probably saying, excuse me, we cannot see that. Okay, I'll put this one up here. And then just, you know, cause we wanna try it out, we'll have this little shell over here at the bottom. All right, I really think we need a little bit more on this side. We may end up doing something else right there, or I might just, oops, do like um, some little writing for my friend on there. I'm not sure. Now we're going to co go back and add a little bit of background things on here. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the collage medium, and like Tim Holt says, if you watch his demos, this stuff dries very quickly. So you really don't have time to move it around. That's why you really want to kind of know where you want it before you stick it because of that. Now, this, this stuff is very thin and I wasn't paying attention and I did kind of mess up his nose a little bit. So we're just going to lightly pull it down. That's okay. He still looks all right. Take your time, don't be like me, and not be paying attention. And the reds always bleed with Copics, and I should have gone lighter on the red. So this one, I'm gonna be careful this time and pay attention so I don't end up messing up this part of the angelfish. I'll lay him on there, and then I'm just going to, oh, I'm not doing too good today. Y'all, this is not Melina's plan. All right, let's see. We're just gonna lightly lift him up. There we go, and tap him down. All right, now we got him. And then just, if you're doing a napkin, you wanna be, this doesn't, like I said, this doesn't tear as easy, but napkins will tear if you get them too wet. All right, maybe we can go back and lift up his yeah, we're gonna leave him alone. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna go around and continue to glue things on and hope I don't mess anything else up. He's pretty easy because he doesn't have a lot of intricate parts to him. I got a dried up glob on there, so. Now this one, um, I don't remember if this one dries matte. I use it mostly on paper, so I really don't pay attention. But the paint this I painted this with is a satin finish. So I think whatever you use will work. Now we're going to see how this um, seashell works out. I'm going to put him right over here in the corner. Now he is tissue paper, so he's going to be more like a napkin as far as when he gets wet, how he's going to react. And he's going to bubble a little bit more. The collage paper doesn't tend to bubble as much. And All right. He worked out well. Oops. So let's put a little down for the clownfish. I should have done um, a little anemone. I think that's how you say it. 
for the clownfish down here. I'm really excited for what I'm going to do for um, the next one. I hope it works out because I've had the idea for a while, which is kind of, it's funny because I'll get these ideas and then I'm scared to try them. Um, who knows why? I'm a weirdo, I guess. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love it. Now, I will probably, um, after this layer dries, I'm going to go back and paint a layer of the collage medium on the whole frame. So you don't just have these um, spots that have the collage medium on it. I really apologize for my lighting, guys. I am trying hard to figure it out, and I do not know what to do. I know I'm getting shadows. Now, um... I used alcohol inks. I don't know if you used a water-based ink if it would smear when you use this or not, you would have to just try it and see, cause I'm not, ooh, no, I'm not sure how that would work. Let me bring this down now. And we'll just end up, I'll sand off that little spot that's hanging off the edge. just want to make sure like I'm getting some of that collage medium on the side and I'm just making sure I wipe it off so you don't have a big glob. Let's see a little thing of, uh, from the brush, not this brush, but the brush I painted the white paint on with a little fuzz ball. All right, I'm going to wipe this up and then we will come back and put a layer on the rest of it real quick. So we're going to just start on this side over here. You know, before we do that, I'm going to think I'm going to do this next step. Let me close this. And I always put this in a wet, like I have it in a wet um, washcloth. I'm going to take, see these little bubbles right there? I think I'm going to use some of those on the outer part of the frame just to add a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a background. I thought I had a small block. Oh. So let me take this two from off. I keep, for Christmas, I keep a block that says two from on it. And I obviously have not pulled that off since Christmas. So what I want to use is um, the kit has this little sparkly embossing powder. So I want to try to do it for, we're going to try it and see how it works. It, it may not work, but we're going to try it. That seems to be the, the mantra today. So let's see. I do need to make sure that that collage medium is all the way dry and it isn't because it's going to stick on there. So let's let that dry a little more because that is going to stick um, where the, uh, I just pull that extra piece of this off. So we're going to wait on that. We'll let this dry a little more before we come back and add the blue. So I do want that to be nice and dry. Let's go ahead and just add a layer over the whole surface. I 
I did get a little globby here and there with this, but we're just going to let this dry. Put that back in there, keep it wet. And now I'm gonna move on to the next one and then we'll come back after that dries and do the other parts that I wanna do. This has like a little staple or something coming through right there. So here's a close up of what it looks like. And you can see the little lines. You can probably see fuzz in there too because there tends to be a good bit of fuzz in my house. I do see some fuzzes in there. It's funny the things you see when you look at it up close and you don't see it when it's sitting on your desk. All right, let me see if I can get this piece. Oh good, that piece of fuzz comes off. I'm gonna set this aside and let this dry. All right, so my next idea is to use alcohol inks. I've never used alcohol inks on wood. I know you can, I've never done it before. So before I start on that, let me clean up this because I don't want alcohol inks to get on all this stuff because they will, they're gonna whoops, stick to anything and everything. So let me clean up all this. All right, a while back I moved things around. Of course, you know, I moved my my craft room area around so I wasn't sure where I put everything. Okay, those are for metal, let's see. I have stream, I think that would be pretty because we're still keeping with our beach theme here. And then this is one of the pearls. So that's the celestial. And that's a blending solution. No. Let's see. I don't know if they're going to move at all on this. Okay, so I have these two colors. The pearl has the little ball in it. And then this one's just your regular alcohol ink. I think I'm going to try it. So that fuzz on here again. Now I painted this with that same paint I used on the other one, this multi-surface outdoor indoor paint. And I'm going to try it with this. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I'm really not sure how this is going to work out. So we're gonna put a little bit of this color and then some of the pearls. To give it kind of that shimmer. And now I'm just gonna go all around. Now because this is such a cheap, um, wood frame it does have like cracks and little things in there that is just probably going to show no matter what you do now that's turning out pretty i do like some of the white showing through so look that's coming out really nice and you can see that sheen of that um the the pearls. Can y'all see the pearls? I can see it. It's nice and shimmery. So let's keep going. I may have to add some more to the felt pad. Let's go ahead and we'll add a little bit more. Get more of the stream. We'll kind of do the same um, configuration I did before and I don't think it matters, but we'll just do it anyway. I'm sure my hands are going to be covered with ink by the time we're done. Oh, I got it much wetter that time, so it's going on a little bit better. Come back and do this. I was a little bit uh, timid with it before because I wasn't sure what it was going to do. Oh yeah, it's nice and saturated now. It's going on much better. Now, I don't know if I can use the uh, gold. 
I don't know if I want to with it being for the, um, I mean, why not try it, right? It, it may work. Let's put a little bit of gold on here and we'll see what it does. We'll just put just a little, oh, I got to stir that up. It may not be good anymore. I've had it a long time. And yes, things have a shelf life. And I think this one has reached its shelf life. Because it does not want to mix. Definitely doesn't look that gold. Let's see. Well, that did a little bit better. Ish. Ooh, I just slung it all over my desk. Do not shake it with the lid off. <laughs> so we're just going to go through and see what happens if we dab this around. Yeah, I just think that's old. It's not really working. And kind of blended the colors out more, but it didn't really um, do any gold on it. But that's okay. I mean, it does on paper, but that's all right. Okay, that's gorgeous. Now, I got to decide, do I want to do the edges? I kind of like them white. Why not? Let's just do the edges. We may have to re-wet it because I just took it all off. Do not use alcohol inks if you don't like your hands getting yucky because, yeah. Oops, or wear gloves. And there again, don't shake them when you don't have the lid on. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go over some of these spots. I just did the giant blobs of color. Okay. So let's go over the edge. See, I would have liked to have done something like this, but with that technique we were using, you wouldn't have been able to, you know, decoupage would just, the color would come through that where we had painted, I mean colored it, and then it would just all look either muddied or, you know, the yellows with the oranges wouldn't have, whoops. The orange would not have looked orange and it wouldn't have been good. I gotta hope we're not rubbing off everything on the other side. Yeah, if you don't want this on your skin, definitely wear gloves. It doesn't bother me, but you know, if it if you don't like getting things on your hands, wear gloves. We did some tie-dye a couple of weeks ago. That was the first time I've ever done tie-dye and it was actually fun. But we learned, yeah, you should definitely wear gloves when you do tie-dye. <laughs> yeah, we had dye all over our hands. Not not great. All right, I think that looks nice. We'll let that dry. Of course, with alcohol ink, you can go over it again and again, and the alcohol will, in the wet inks, will kind of make the other ink still move around. I don't know how much on wood this will keep happening because wood is porous, but I did paint it with a, a satin 
finished paint, which if I would have used a gloss, it might have had a little more movement. I'm not sure. Like I said, I've never used alcohol ink on wood before. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and clean all this up. I'm, for this one, instead of decorating as much the outside of the frame, we're going to color, I'm gonna put all those dyes over there, um, something to go in the inside of the frame. And I think this would be a good image. Just this coral right here. It's pretty with the starfish and such as that. So we're gonna color that. And I I really like this um, shimmery paper. We're gonna try it. This came in the kit. Um, I'll look up what it's called in case you didn't get the kit and you wanna order some. So I'm going to use my Misty for this. I had to search for it. It's been a while since I've used it. Hopefully this will fit in here. If not, we'll have to use All right. I'm going to try to center it. This If you don't, if you haven't seen anyone use a Misty or you're new to stamping, um, what it does is a stamp positioner that keeps your stamp, um, lets you stamp in the same spot over and over again. So if you're not good at stamping and you're not, you don't get that, you know, nice clear image on the first try, then this is one way to help you. There's other stamp positioners out there, but this one is the most popular. All right, so I'm gonna give it time to contact with the paper so that ink can transfer. This is a pretty detailed stamp. Now I'm hoping this Memento ink is going to actually dry on this type of paper. We may have to use an archival ink instead. Um, hmm, let's see. Let's go ahead and keep going because I think it is. I think it's going to dry. So this part is probably that magnet not letting it hit all the way. Ink it up a little bit more. Make sure I put a little more pressure over here. So I'm going to move this magnet over here so I can hopefully get that to transfer better. I'm not putting any more ink on it because I don't want it to start getting smudgy. If you, sometimes if you have really fine uh, images and then you put get too much ink, it starts to kind of smudge some of the fine, fine uh, line work. I don't want to do that. All right, so we'll see if this dries on this paper, and then if it doesn't, we'll just restamp it with some archival ink, which is a permanent ink here, and see what happens. If it smudges, we're just going to have to do something different. Well, it's not really smudging, so that's good. Nope. I mean, I got a little bit of black on the tip, but nothing to really worry about. So this might work out. And if you don't really like to color, I mean, this stamp set's really, like really for coloring, but what you could do is I really liked 
the background for the picture that this month, of course, you'd have to get all the sticky off. You could put that in a frame because that's beautiful. But we're going to use that as, um, you know, to kind of help us paint, do this. Let me, um, I'm just going to use like a rainbow of colors, I think, because, you know, I don't, realism, I'm not too worried about with this. I'm just going to go in with some different colors and just have fun. Okay, I finally finished coloring it and, you know, this is what happens when you have a person who hasn't colored in a while who really likes to color. I went a little bit crazy, but <laughs> it's done now. I really did color it for like a really long time so I'm just going to round the edges the corners because the frame itself has rounded corners and um, I went ahead and cut it back to put um, and I know it's pink but that's just because um, that's what I could find so I cut it to be the same size just to add a little bit more support And there is our pretty frame. And I hope you think it's pretty. <laughs> so here's our frame with the uh, decorated picture. Now I thought it would be cute to maybe put a couple of fish on the outside and I may end up doing that. And if I do, I'll take a picture of it um, just to cut out, you know, color some of the fish and put them around the outside edge. But um, I'll see, I don't know. I might like it just like this. All right, so that's our first project. Okay, so that other project's completed, so now we're gonna finish up this one. It is completely dry now. So what I'm going to do is get that stamp that we had earlier, and I'm going to get some embossing ink for it because it is an embossing powder. Let me see if I can find my embossing ink. We'll use the Tim Holtz embossing ink. Any embossing ink will do. Put my color pencils up. So my idea, and we'll hope this works, cause you know, I haven't tried it yet, is to stamp um, like some little bubbles and then to take the embossing powder And sprinkle some of that on there. Oh yeah. Knock off the excess. And then we'll just put this back in. Oops. And we'll heat that up. All right, so it did, does take a little bit longer to melt because it's on the wood, but, um, there is the little bubble. So I'm just gonna go around and stamp some of the little bubbles here and there, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. All right, now that's really cute, but I think I wanna add something here. So um, let's see. I don't know if I wanna put salt water heals everything. Yeah, these are good for cards, but they're not really good for here. Hmm. I don't know. I am think I'm going to look through my stamp sets and see if I can find a sentiment to put there. Because I really feel like it needs something right there. Oh, well, I'll let y'all know if I decide to do something different. But, um... So you would just put a picture in there. I don't have a picture, but here we go. Here's our two projects for today. We have our 
alcohol inked uh, frame with a Copic colored, and you could actually, you know, instead of doing the picture in the middle, you could do something like this, but instead of, um, you know, that decoupage, you could just cut out some, and I still may do that, and put them on the frame. That would be really cute also. And this is your other frame that we have is just some decoupage on the outside and I still feel like it's missing something too but we're just gonna go with simple we're gonna we're gonna go with simple I'm not good at simple but we're gonna go for it but anyhow thank you so much for tuning in today I appreciate everyone who watches please subscribe if you haven't already and thanks a lot bye everybody